Welcome to The Practical Intuitive, where host Robin Fritz explores mind, body, and spirit for the real world. Robin is an intuitive, spiritual consultant, and past life regression specialist based in Seattle, Washington. As The Practical Intuitive, she explores life on our conscious, evolving planet, our mother. It's all here, from how the world really works to intuition, the human-animal bond, mediumship, clearing space with space cooperating, and spirituality. It's Robin Fritz, The Practical Intuitive, helping you master body, mind, and spirit for the real world. No ifs, ands, buts, or BS ever. Welcome to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz. I'm so happy to be with you today. It is January 2nd, 2023. It's like, wow, that seems like really in the future. (laughs) It's hard to believe we're in a new year and yet it feels like we've been in it forever, right? And um, that's what I want to talk about today. As I explore modalities that we can use to progress in our healing and to make our lives better and to do the work we came here to do. Um, So again, I'm Robin Fritz. I live in Seattle, Washington with my reincarnated animal family, Oliver Alki. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and Karis, a Russian blue cat. And uh, we rang in the new year the other night. And um, and I have to say, you know, thinking about moving forward in the new year and what you want to do, we all kind of talk about what are we going to do in the new year and what is it going to look like? And, you know, my emphasis in, in my radio show is and in my life, is serving our mother, our beloved, conscious, evolving planet, as an ambassador from our mother to the planet, and to help you understand how important you are to the planet, how you are all ambassadors to the planet, how we need to work on being the real ambassadors that we should be, which is to understand that we're equals with all life, not superior to it. And sure, I drive the car and, and buy the groceries. And for, the, for no matter what, I've never been able to convince my kids to vacuum <laughs> my animal family. But they have their own things that they're doing in, our, in their lives, right? And our lives as humans are complex, not because we're any better than other beings, but because we're... We're locked in ego and self-doubt, and we spend a lot of time trying to remember what we forgot, our previous lives, and the lessons that we learned and the triumphs that we had. And so at the beginning of the year, I want to talk about two modalities that I love to use with clients, and I call one of them soul progression clearing, and the other you've heard of is past life regression. Now, I want to talk about these modalities, but I also want to start by telling you that you can do these two modalities on your own. And I want to quickly tell you how to do that so that you can um, plan on using these amazing methods of really clearing out your soul issues and moving yourself forward because the world really needs you to be at your best. So I will explain these modalities as we move forward. But here's the thing that I want you to think about before we go into a quick connection with my crystal partner, Fallon. Learn how your intuition works. You may see things, feel things, know things, hear things. But learning how your intuition works will help you understand what's going on inside of you, what's blocking you, what might be a physical issue, what might be things that are attached to you because energy is stuck everywhere and it flows freely everywhere as well and as we move throughout our day we get bits and pieces of energy stuck to us and we need to keep ourselves clear so when you know how your intuition works you can be aware of what's what's attached to you and what doesn't need to be there and or at least aware of it and then just dismiss it and i'll explain what i mean by that 
but take time, like maybe once a week or so, to stop, do what you need to do to create sacred space for yourself, and invite your soul, okay, mind, body, and spirit, right, to give you information, go head to toe, what's blocking me, how do I feel blocked, why, you know, and then why do you feel blocked, what do you think it is that's blocking you, and then Tell it to leave. Just, hey, I need that to stop. And then do a simple energy healing technique. You can spend years and years learning energy healing techniques. Or you can do the method that the goddess Connie taught me, which is just put your hands on your heart, breathe in, and imagine energy going into you from your palms of your hands. Just breathe in. And that's it. That's all you need to do. It works. Okay. So... I want to get into the modality, soul progression, clearing, and past life regression. Um, and as we do that, I want to give you the opportunity to tap into my crystal partner, Fallon, his citrine Lemurian quartz, right? So as you take a deep breath, just close your, don't do this when you're driving, please, but take a deep breath, breathe light and love and harmony and Fallon's gold light straight to your heart. And with each beat of your heart, imagine that gold light flooding your body. Body, mind, and spirit. Clearing, relaxing, getting you ready for a new year. I know you're experiencing foul in the way your intuition works most strongly and just enjoy it, knowing that that will help boost you up today in what we're talking about. So... You know, the world seems to be plagued by crises right now. You know, we've got so many things happening, so many weird things going on. And, um, you know, and solutions tend to be long, drawn-out affairs. I know when I created the modality Soul Progression Clearing, it was partly because I was horrified at watching um, energy healers, shamanic practitioners, whatever, just bringing people back week after week, month after month for continued healing. And while it's all good, we can do that for ourselves and we can continue to deal with really deep blocks with the help of professionals. You can uh, clear these things out immediately and um, I'm all in for a big quick fix, right? Something that works, something that helps get stuff out. You know, so we could move things along a bit, a little bit faster. I am all for moving things along really fast. But the whole purpose of our lives, really, and of these modalities in particular, is to help you dig deep into your soul, dig deep into your intuitive self, and continue to grow and develop in this lifetime. Because our lifelong task, right? Lifelong task is to learn to love ourselves. And people say, well, what am I supposed to do with my life? I'm stuck in this dead-end job. Or I like my job, but is there something more? Um, sure. It's learning to love yourself and find out what that means in your life. And I know it may sound trite, but it's really important. And it took me a lot of years to learn that. And when I did, I realized how important it was, not just for um moving along and doing what I want in my life, but physical, mental, emotional, and soul health, uh, really to learning to love ourselves helps us also contribute to the welfare of our planet. And that is the big thing that we all need to consider and take care of. I mean, (laughs) look what's going on right now out there. We need to clear the blocks. We need to fill ourselves up with healthy energy. And we need to just send that back into the world and remember that everything we are and everything we do is important. You are here. The world needs you. So how are you going to be your best? Well, one way you can look at it is thinking that we're speeding down the road of life, right? Or hot riding it out of there and things are going really well. And then, boom, you hit a few speed bumps or even a roadblock or get distracted by the view and things go a little off. Or you may take a wrong turn on that big highway of life 
or a detour that takes you so far off course. It's like, wait, how do I get back to that main road again? You know, we're all there at some point. Um, for the last few years, dealing with uh, needing a new hip and all of the really uh, painful things that were involved with that, I did keep my sights set on moving forward and continuing to move forward. And um, you can, if I always figure if I can do something, everybody can do it. So you can, but when you're speeding down the road of life and you hit a roadblock and you're stumped, what do you do, right? Well, for a lot of us, the one thing we didn't do was look in our rear view mirror and see that person waving at us, trying to get us our attention, trying to, hey, wait, wait, slow down. I've got to talk to you. That person in your rear view mirror is your soul, right? Waving you down, trying to get your attention. Listening to your soul can be the difference between making a bad or neutral decision and even a really great one, right? And there are lots of ways to do that. And there are lots of modalities out there. You can, you know, you can go to counseling, get your insurance to pay for it. You can go for a walk and experience the art of connecting with nature. Sorry, I just looked out the window and realized there's a lot of awe going out. I watched my cat watch a squirrel running towards her um, as she's looking out the window and thinking, yeah, you know, things fascinate all of us. It's just who you are and what you're being fascinated by, right? So when you're looking around, when you're stopping and letting your soul talk to you and informs you about the world going on around you and what it means and what it could mean and what you're going to do about it, right? So the first thing you do when you're in crisis or strategic planning is to figure out how to get through it successfully, right? How to get through this emergency, which is kind of where I was in the last 18 months, how to get through this over time. But the more information you give yourself, the better off you are. And sometimes that information is really deep inside of you. It's deep inside your soul. And so what you want to do is find out what your soul knows, right? And so there are a couple ways to look at that. And people come to me or they talk to each other or you see it online all the time. What is my purpose in life? What am I doing here? What am I supposed to be doing? Well, you know, and the answer may sound trite. And again, I've said it over and over again because I learned it too. The answer is to learn to love yourself. That is not easy as a human. It is really tough. And I know animals, like my animal family looks at me and I'm like, how is that so hard? You know, because they're not simpler or less intelligent than we are, but they're more connected to this, their souls and what their souls knew in previous lifetimes and what they're bringing forth in this one. And I've seen that over and over again. And so how do you get connected to your soul purpose, to understanding what your soul is doing over a lifetime? So that main focus, how do you love yourself? that you carry forward, that you carry forward into the afterlife when you die. That messes up so many people in the afterlife. And I know as a medium running into so many of the stuck dead and their answer is they didn't love themselves in life and they don't know how to love themselves in death. That is your number one thing. So how did you do it before? How did you do it in previous lifetimes? And what can that teach you now? And that is soul purpose, learning to love ourselves and learning to love beyond ourselves. And, and don't mistake that for your day-to-day -day job, for the job that puts, you know, food on the table and a roof over your head. Our jobs can delight us or bore us. They can really pump us up and they can bring us down. They could be dull and hard, um, but they're how we get through the life that we chose when we chose the body that we came here in. So when you think about it, you chose to be human. You chose to try to answer one part of that ego question of who I am and how do I grow this way. And then we look at all life around us. What is a tree doing in that in its lifetime? What, what are our animals doing? And again, processing the whole 
soul learning to love itself issue, which is big for all life. So especially as humans, it's important to remember that we make mistakes, that we make friends, we lose friends, that we have family and we lose family, that all of those things are part of life. And learning about ourselves and the world around us and connecting to our mother and to the planet, that's what we're here for. And everything we do to keep our lives healthy and moving forward contributes to that. So, yes, you may not like the job that you're doing. Then you can find ways to get a different job. But remember, first and foremost, we're here to move our soul forward to understand that even in the dark times, we are worthy of love. And um, two of the things that I, I use with clients, and again, as I explained in the beginning, you can tap these on your own, soul progression clearing and past life regression. So just before we go to break, let me talk a little bit about soul progression clearing and we'll continue on after the break. Um, soul progression clearing quickly is a way to clear out the things that are blocking you without having to worry about what they are or even to think about what they are. Just clear out the blocks. Fill yourself up with healthy energy and move forward in your life. Past life regression is a little different. It's when you want to tap a past life skill and bring it forward or when you want to heal things that you feel have come from a previous lifetime. After the break, We'll talk about these modalities more and give you some ideas of how you can work with them. Hang on. We'll be right back. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This segment of The Practical Intuitive is brought to you by Andrea Bovee, licensed insurance agent at boveeinsurance.com. Andrea specializes in in affordable health insurance. Yes, affordable health insurance exists. It's called a defined benefit plan, and it's a budget concept. That means you'll be able to see any doctor, access outpatient services, receive covered preventative services such as mammograms and colonoscopies, enjoy unlimited free virtual doctor visits, and be covered for urgent care, ER, and hospital visits. There's more. During the free consultation, insurance agent Andrea Bovey can help you decide if you should add critical illness or accident coverage so all your risks are covered when something serious occurs. All this while still delivering savings. Yes, the premiums can be much lower than those in marketplace plans. Ready to check it out? Go to boveyinsurance.com to book a free consultation with insurance agent Andrea Bovey. Andrea is based in Arizona, but she works by phone and webinar so she can help you wherever you are. Andrea works with her clients to find the best healthcare products at the best prices. Ready to learn more? Contact Andrea Bovey at boveyinsurance.com. That's B O V E Y insurance.com. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not excited excited for summer summer break? Because she may not be having lunch again until September. 
or a war veteran who's having a hard time landing, landing a job and getting back on his feet. I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I am hunger in America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz. And today we're talking about soul progression, clearing, and past life regression. Why? Well, you know, sometimes life seems like a struggle. We're wondering why we're here. Maybe even the puzzle pieces are coming back together again. But we want to dig deeper. We We want to feel like we're really contributing we want to feel like we really are growing in our life and and that's important you know growth can be horrible as in painful and having things happen to us but growth can also be a way of going oh my gosh you know at the end of your life like wow you know I thought I led a quiet life and maybe I did but I really learned how to love myself my family, my country, and and that's really it. How to love our planet, right? So when we're looking at clearing out blocks, right? Clearing out what's in our past, even in previous lifetimes, right? Our soul knows what happened. Our soul knows what happened earlier in our current life and in previous lifetimes. And our souls know what's blocking or hindering us in this one, right? Right? It also knows what skills we used in previous lifetimes, what worked for us and what didn't, right? So there's a lot of basic education that our soul could give to us if we knew how to tap it, right? When we better understand those things, we can better resolve whatever problems we have right now and get creative insights and boost our personal and professional lives. And who does not want that, right? Okay, so soul progression clearing. So I created soul progression clearing after looking at, you know, things that were going on around me, okay? So one of the things I I love to do is to help people clear their spaces, whether they're their homes or their businesses. And especially in a home, you know, our homes are created to nurture and protect us. And a lot of our personal joys and sorrows and troubles, right, we live through in our homes and our private lives. And the deeper I got into clearing spaces, the more I saw that the homes were trying to help their people and their people were somewhat oblivious to it but kind of sometimes deep in their own angst and they couldn't couldn't move forward right and um and energy healing is a really quick fix but i started looking around to see what other people were doing and i um stumbled on you know some shamanic practices and you know well i'm all for various forms of healing i you know I had my doubts about a lot of things from what I had to pay to license my dog for the year <laughs> because I refused to neuter him for his own personal health to all kinds of ways that we get along in the world. But um, I, I looked at some of the shamanic practices out there and I took a couple classes from a person I really respect and whose work is amazing. And I learned a lot about different ways of looking at the world. And that's always good. You know, it's always good to learn how other people think. And um, shamanic practitioners, I don't know. They, um, well, let's just skip right over that and look. <laughs> we want to get into that one. There are some modalities of healing out there, of working with souls and people that have really created controversy over time. And one of them is a thing called curse unraveling. And curse unraveling is a shamanic perspective that someone in maybe now or 
maybe even you or in your family or in the past somehow cursed you or your family line in this life or another. And that curse carries forward into modern times, right? So you've been cursed at one point. And I'm like, well, why can't people like uncurse you (laughs) instead of cursing you, like bless you, which is kind of where we all need to be working right now because blessing each other has not been a common theme especially since the pandemic started. You know, it's all a bit heavy and curse unraveling makes people feel like victims, right? Instead of people who can see and resolve an issue. So I looked at the process of curse unraveling and I thought, well, you know, there is something there in the fact that there are things that happened in previous lifetimes that maybe held us back, but there are also things Like uh, the process of ancestral healing is like all about the bad things that happen to you. But there are plenty of good things that happened to you in previous lifetimes. And, you know, let's look at how those can help us, right? So um, there are a couple other um, shamanic things. And um, one of them is the concept of removing entities, Uh, you know, Catholic churches called it exorcism and really messed people up as a result. And I I can say that in all fairness, having been Catholic and having looked at it very objectively and finally saying, yeah, no, thank you. Um, But the idea that uh, things get stuck to us is a very real thing. So if you look at clearing space, right, and you look at what happens on a daily basis. So, say you go to the grocery store. Please wear a mask, okay? Because we're still not out of the pandemic, and we still are in the flu season, um, flus and colds and whatever is going around. But anyway, say you're in a grocery store, okay? So, what happens in that store? Well, it's a bean on its own. It's chosen to be a grocery store in that time, and people come in and out during the day. Well, the grocery store being a being on its own, like your home or your business, right, has its own unique energy. And each of us do as we go in there. We won't even talk about the food, right? We'll just talk about people in the building. So we all have our own energy system and we go in there. And as we go about our day and we go in the grocery store, little bits and pieces of our energy fly off and they can get stuck in that space or they can get stuck on other people. So basically you come home and it isn't just your clothes that is, you know, picked up pollution or whatever, but you and your soul have picked up bits and pieces of stuck energy, right? So you want to get rid of that stuck energy. But here's the other thing. (sighs) Tell people there are so many things out there that we don't physically see with our eyes that if you knew what was out there in the world around you, you would not leave your home. You just don't want that stuff attaching to you. But guess what? It already has, right? So you have a relationship with your family, you people you meet on the street, little bits of their energy comes in. But then, you know, and I've run into this. I've had the dead come into my home and try to take my kids. (laughs) And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What the heck do you think you're doing? Leave my kids alone. It's not malevolent, usually. It's just confused dead people, right? So that's where you get into the idea of exorcism or getting rid of entity attachments. And yeah, sometimes it's freaky, but a lot of times it's psychological stress and other times it's just stuck energy, right? But want to get deep into a session with people, a soul progression clearing session, I'll look at, you know, family ties or even ancient ties um, through the family line. Uh, I remember one time in particular, uh, someone saying, I, I do not want to continue my family line. I am not having children and the line ends with me and I traced it back a thousand years ago where the paternal ancestor wanted his line to continue forever and talking to him I said well you had a good run a thousand years and now it's over right so there are real things that attach to us through our ancestral line through our daily lives and the idea then is to 
gently disentangle them to remove those energy threads. And what Fallon does, my crystal partner, is burn them up, so to speak, so that those energy threads are burned up and can't attach to anymore. And then we send that thread back to that original being, whatever it is, so that it can continue its journey of healing. Because, you know, when you think about it, when things attach to you, they, they can get stuck too, and they need to continue their own journey of healing. So then there's energy healing and intuitive insight. So when we're talking about this process of soul progression clearing, then um, what I do, and I'm going to tell you kind of what I do so that you can do it on your own, right? So you can do some of this on your own, maybe all of it on your own in a way that will help you clear out, you know, things that are stuck so that you can continue moving forward and being the great being that you are, the very best that you can be and contributing to this beautiful planet that we live on and remember being your own ambassador to our beloved mother, our planet. So what we do is, person tells me what they're there for, or what they're feeling, what, you know, what the goal of their session is. And, and everyone who comes for a session has something in particular they want to let go of. And then we literally, I literally scan them head to toe. And at each body part, you know, people, some people call them shockers, but I kind of go through the whole body. And I, I ask them to tell me what they're feeling. And as they do that, I we. I make notes on what I'm noticing there. Like, oh, a lot of people feel congested when they start, when they concentrate on their throat area. Well, you know, in a, in a way, the throat area is, is called your ability to speak your truth, you know. And, and I find that to be true in a lot of cases, um, shyness or, or whatever. But we go through all of those areas, then we talk about them area by area what we see and then just literally clear out those blocks bringing in their spiritual team the goddess that i work with and fallon of course and this person's own um, desire to get rid of those blocks and just remove them and send them off those energy threads to be burned off returned to others or just be done with so that they can move forward. Then when they're cleared out, they can um, refill them up with healthy energy from Fallon. And it's wonderful to see these people um, just really um, have an opportunity to take charge of what's been bothering them and to see the progress that they, they make. And literally in one session, so think about how you could apply this in your life and how you can carry that forward and heal some of the crap that's bothering you. And on top of that, just give yourself a boost of healthy energy and just moving forward. You don't always need to know what it is that's blocking you. Just just tell it to go and help yourself get past that. And that is an amazing thing. And as examples, as you know, stories of how that works, I'd, um, I've had professionals come um, and look at. Well, I'm I'm blocked in my business. I'm just I've just lost my creative streak and clear that out. And they they take charge in a way. My job is simply to assist. You are allowing your soul to come up and tell you what it needs and wants, and then you just take off. I mean. It's like a vote of confidence in yourself. And boy, there sure isn't enough of that going around, right? And so I've seen um, really skilled doctors come and, you know, like, I'm really accomplished, but I can't pass my board exams. And what is it? A cultural tie that tells them because uh, they haven't followed the old traditional cultural way of life that they're all somehow not as good. Removing that block helps them move forward and lo and behold, they end up passing their board exams or they end up finding a new way to introduce a new product that they were stumped on 
or people tell me, wow, I just feel that I understand myself better, that I'm more comfortable in my skin. And uh, that is amazing because you're not making judgments about anything. You're simply looking at things. If you do the head-to-toe scan on yourself, you can see um, some of the blocks. Just remove them. may not need to know where they came from. You just want them done with. And so that's why I created Soul Progression Clearing because I want everything to be resolved quickly. And I know a lot of other people do too. (laughs) And you you know, you don't need to go to counseling or shamanic healer or something every week or every month for the rest of your life. Try it and see where you go. Keep a record of your experiments with this and modify it as you will to make yourself the best that you can be. And gosh, I mean, I've just the last few years, I've met so many people just in my daily life that have lost their connection to the planet, to their souls. You know, it's, we live in a really, you know, a hundred years from now, they're going to look back on us and shake their heads at all the stuff that was going on in the world because we are aware of every, every aspect of it, every piece of thing that happens on the planet. Like we weren't for thousands of years. So hang on to that soul progression, clearing, just clear out the blocks that are affecting you, fill yourself up with healthy energy. And that hands-on-your-heart technique that the goddess taught me is really all the energy healing you need. It works. So after the break, I'm going to talk about past life regression, and I'm going to share a really cool story of a past life regression, my own, (laughs) that I shared yesterday with friends as uh, we were on our way to celebrate my birthday. So hang in there. Come back after the break, and we're going to talk about past life and between life regressions and what that looks like. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, walk Walk a mile mile in my my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out, and for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org, brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz. The sun is shining in Seattle this afternoon. Wow. (laughs) I mean, it's like we've had quiet weather for a few days and we're all kind of going like, wait, wait, no storms, no ice, no, oh my gosh. So it's amazing, right? So the planet herself is clearing herself out here in Seattle. So today we're talking about soul progression clearing and past life regression. So I've talked a little I've talked a lot about soul progression clearing. So you would choose soul progression clearing, work out a, you, you work with me or on your own to uh, figure out 
what you want to cover in that um, in a session like that. But when you're try it for yourself and see how it works. Here's you know some of the things you would be looking at to do is to kickstart your creativity, to boost your personal and professional life, to really get a deeper understanding of what your soul is doing in this lifetime and moving forward and what you're doing in the universe. Um, you may feel stuck at home or at work or, or drained by people and family and, and work or feel like you can't stand up for yourself or that there's something in you that shouldn't be there. Um, and sure, can be entities or, you know, ancestral ties, but can also be thought forms. You know, thought forms are real. They're like heaven, hell, good, bad, you know, all of those things can be thought forms. The more you think about a thing, it becomes a thought form and that is as real as anything else that affects you. So if you want to get energetically or vibrationally clear and just literally claim, and I know it sounds trite, but it is not, claim your power to be your best self. And um, in really effective energy clearing, you'd look at soul progression clearing. But sometimes people have a feeling that the current situation they're dealing with or something that they felt is really connected to a past life. And they're pretty pretty convinced of that, right? It's a past life issue. Um, and um, again, you can all the same reasons that you would do a soul progression clearing, you can do in a past life regression, right? Um, but when you're going to do a past life regression, you're really looking at the actual cause of something. So you're going to dig deep to find out what it is that's affecting you. Um, and I, I kind of look at it for two different reasons. One is that there's something that's affecting you and not in a good way in this lifetime that you feel is connected to previous lifetimes and you want to heal. You want to get rid of it. You want to get it done. But also... You may want to tap past life skills and bring them forward, which is really an amazing thing. So the two different examples would be um, someone who came, came because, and understand I only share stories if people give me permission, but someone who came because she's worried all her life about her teeth and discovered in past life regression that those were past life issues and not current life issues. Um and that's some of the some of the things that that can affect you. Someone else came because she was fascinated with uh, the whaling industry off the east coast of the United States in the seventeen and eighteen hundreds, and she wanted to look specifically at some previous lifetimes that she felt she experienced, and and she did. And um, that's a process where you can say, okay, that was that lifetime, and um, and you can look objectively at that lifetime. And then when we look between lifetimes um, is when we get, when our soul gets to be really super objective, I say. When it can look back and say, yeah, this happened and that happened. And I really learned um, in that lifetime um, to respect myself more, to understand that the people in my family have their own issues and that we can still be a family. It's just, they're just such amazing insights people get from looking at their past lives. And sometimes those past lives are scary. And then, you know, you can pull back and like, just say, okay, I don't want to look at that lifetime anymore, or just look at it as an observer, not as someone actually experiencing it. But, um, there are other past life experiences where, you're curious about something. So um, I've had people be curious about um, what kind of skill set they used in previous lifetimes or how energy worked or how herbs, how they worked with herbs in a previous lifetime. And they were working on some sort of formula now and that we're like, okay, I'd like to understand um, how I worked with herbs in previous lifetimes, because I'm convinced I did. I'm convinced I knew things back then that I don't know now, and I'd like to look at that. And what a fascinating journey that was um, 
to understand that this you, it, you can go back to a previous lifetime and find information that you can bring forward now and you actually use. It's like, you know, it's like you put your previous lifetime on in a video <laughs> and now you can go back and find that information that only you have, which is just fascinating. So I had a, and and one was particularly fascinating to me was that a client came interested in how energy worked and she, she didn't know why, but she'd become obsessed with understanding how energy worked. And so she, um, so we looked back and she found a lifetime where she had a, a, a family in a small village and she would dance and as she danced she spun energy for the community and it was fascinating and it was also very humbling because and I know I've shared this in other um, in other places um, she literally this woman from a small village you know no formal you know schooling education she literally stopped in the middle of the road and turned around and talked to herself in the future and did not bat an eye. I mean, she was clearly connected to her soul and where she was. And she explained to herself in the future how energy worked for her. And I was as fascinated as my client. And it reminded me again and again over and over that the problem that we have in our modern time is that We've allowed philosophy and culture, so to speak, and religion deprive us of our connection to our souls. Even though they may talk about our souls, it's like there's a gateway. There's a gatekeeper at the gateway. And you can't know it unless we decide that you can know it because we're in charge of you. And that is not my philosophy at all. My philosophy is you are an amazing soul and you and your physical incarnation in this time is one more opportunity to learn more about what you can contribute and more about learning to love yourself and not being held back by the strictures of culture and religion and what philosophy tells us that take off those blinders that we've we've acquired over the last three or four hundred years and let go of them and start contributing to the planet and start honoring her as our mother And the problems that we're talking about that exist on our planet and in our culture, those come with solutions when we open ourselves up to that. And if that means tapping a past life, then that's what you do. So um, in a past life regression, you would um, come – well, okay, so there are a couple of ways you could do a past life regression – One is a lot of people go to intuitives and they ask that intuitive to look at them and tell them what they see. Or they say, I have this problem. And then the intuitive can look at you. And, you know, I've, I've, this comes up sometimes in soul clearings or it comes up in just an intuitive session or whatever. Um, Sometimes even in mediumship sessions where a deceased family talk about things that they've seen in the person. But when someone else is looking at a, one of your past lives, what's being missed is the opportunity for you personally to look at your soul and to let your soul speak through you. And you are the expert on that. So I use soul regression hypnotherapy. It was created um, by Brian Weiss and other uh, psychiatrists in in the field now, but soul re- hypnotherapy is is really just relaxing. So if you ever go for a long drive and you start out one place and you end up at the other place and two hours have gone by and you're like, yeah, you were paying attention the whole time, but it just sped by. Basically, hypnotherapy is almost like daydreaming. You don't crack like a duck and you don't you don't fall asleep. You're completely aware and in charge of the whole time and. My job as a soul regression hypnotherapist is to lead you on that journey to that space. So we go to your sacred space. We find um, you find it. You 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 know you, you describe it. You know, and it, depending on how your intuition works, you see it or whatever. But um, 
then we go to that lifetime and we explore that lifetime and what it was and then look at between lives and what that meant to your soul and even look at what you were thinking of doing when you came into this life. Oh, it took me more than half my life to figure out what I was going to do here besides pay the bills, right? Um, And so I'm hoping that most people can figure that out way earlier than I did. But um, when I was, uh, and you have to go through training to be a soul regression hypnotherapist in Washington State, you actually have to be licensed, right? But it's a, it's a real process that offers, you know, real insight. And, um, and I've explained a couple things, but let me just tell you a quick story. So when I was going through it, um, there were circumstances in the class that were very personally threatening to me, as in really personally threatening. And it was a very bad form on the part of the teacher. Um, and I was like not really trusting anybody. So afterwards, there was one person that I was taking the class with. We became friendly and we decided to, you know, exchange sessions. And so I thought, okay, what what can I explore that, you know, should be innocuous, (laughs) you know? And when I was like, okay, well, I've been afraid of heights all my life. And not just afraid of heights, but... You know, the dizzying fall from a height. And so I go across a big bridge. It's like I literally am sweating, you know, like trying to hang on to the steering wheel if I'm driving. It's like it's crazy. I mean, I can't remember anything in my life that would make me afraid of heights. And yet I had this overwhelming fear of heights and of falling from a height. And also, As I've explored in previous shows, I have a tremendous love of trees, especially really big trees. And I've had wonderful conversations with big trees and I've even traveled to just be with big trees. At any rate, during the past life regression, I was curious about that. And lo and behold, I discovered why I was afraid of heights. And um, hang on, because like it's like, what? So there I was on a distant planet and I was some sort of a being that had wings and my job was to tend the giant trees on the planet and I was in love with those trees and it was this sacred job that I had but I could fly and I was well high above the trees and then and then we were invaded by uh, another planet in spaceships and they shot everything and they burned up the forest and when the forest died of course I died too and I fell from a great height and tumbled over and over and over again and wow that seems like crazy but it sure made me understand the weirdness of why I was afraid of heights and I always felt dizzy you know of course being afraid can make you dizzy but it answered some questions for me was it real I think so Are your experiences in a past life regression, are they real or have you made up a story? And the answer is pretty much they're real. But even if you've told the story because you can't get into the session, the story is giving you information and information to help you be your best to move forward and create a life of more ease and more comfort and more ability to contribute to your own welfare and to the welfare of your family and your friends and your country. And um, that's what these uh, modalities are for. So practice them on your own. I'm going to have some little um, video things available on my website so you could actually do a past life regression on your own. Simple one, but, you know, get you into it. And fun and have fun and enjoy it both uh, the soul progression clearing and the past life regression are things that you can use to take control more control to get more information to inspire you to continue to grow so i hope that here in 2023 and moving forward that we all together learn to grow together and to contribute to the world in our own unique ways And if you feel like, wow, you're stuck in a crappy job or whatever, 
it's putting food on the table and taking care of you. And then what's next? Then what do you do? You move forward and remember always that we're here to learn to love ourselves and what that means in carrying it forward. We're here to be ambassadors to our mother, our planet. And what are you going to do next? What are you going to contribute? And what is going to contribute to you? Because we're giving to each other, right? And the planet is giving to you too. So hang on to that. And um, next, and then my next show will be wrapping up my show for for good. I'm moving on to doing other things. Um, and we're going to be talking about how to be a good ancestor. But to contact me, to ask questions, to look at what I offer, go to robinfritz.com, R-O-B-Y-N-F-R-I-T-Z.com. And let me know what you think. And uh, we will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you for joining me and take care.